Thank you for joining us for our community business workshop, um, uh, where we are going to discuss uh, networking for small businesses. This community business workshop series is made possible with the generous support of FUM, FUF, MUFG Bank. Um, the community business workshop series is a collaboration between the Polsky Exchange, the IJ Clinic on Entrepreneurship, and the University of Chicago Office of Civic Engagement. The goal of the series is to provide Southside businesses and entrepreneurs with substantive and actionable programming to grow and sustain their businesses. At this workshop, you'll learn tips to networking with the goal of creating meaningful connections, whether it's a professional or personal setting. We will discuss types of networking and where to find opportunities to socialize. I'd like to introduce our speaker, Anna Maria, Anna Maria VT Welch, uh, founder of President the VT Companies. Uh, some housekeeping items before we begin. If you have questions, please enter it in the chat box on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Once we wrap up the webinar, we'll leave some time to answer your questions. Uh, with that being said, let's begin. Get this going. Hello, everybody, and I wanted to thank the Polsky Center and all of you for joining me today. My name is Anna Maria Vitti Welch, as she said, and I'm president of the Vitti Companies. And um, I wish this could be a little bit more interactive, but it can't be because we are not in person and seeing each other. But hopefully you'll ask questions and give me comments. We're also going to have an exercise. So if you have any paper, pen, or pencil, something to write with, or even your phone for notes, we will do, be uh, drawing a couple things. Um, also, these networking suggestions are mostly for virtual, but some as well as in person. So let's get started. A little bit about me. Um, like she said, I'm the president of the VD Companies. We're a third generation family owned insurance agency. My grandfather started our company in 1938. I work closely with startups and also small businesses to help them understand the mysteries of insurance. I'm sure a lot of you probably felt or feel like this after this pandemic that has um, <laughs> come upon us and has been and is probably not going to be going away for a while. Um, I will tell you the goals for today is a better understanding of networking, ideas for finding networking opportunities, and tips for maximizing your networking efforts. I just want you to let you know that these um, tips and tricks are not only for startups but also for experienced business owners. I've been doing this for over 30 years and I have been practicing these different tips um, and tricks for the last four months myself. Um, <coughs> as you know, this pandemic has turned um, not only us upside down personally, but also for business. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about first is going into this in a positive way. So the positives of going virtual for me, and I'm sure for all of you, is traveling less frequently. I'm sure you've saved money for not having to go to these different events with transportation fees and gas. Using fewer business cards. Um, I usually give out 15 to 20 of them, and I've only been giving out maybe one or two a week. Strengthening your brand. Um, I know that I had a lot of extra time and wanted to really finish our website. So that's something else that we did. Um, also a brochure. And then networking anytime, anywhere. Um, I will say that the networking fees I've saved money on, shoes, clothing, dry cleaning, and also giving out promotional items. And I will tell you also that since these um, events and presentations are virtual, 
there are a lot of people that don't really like to ask questions in front of everybody and it's easier to ask questions because all you have to do is just um, ask a question to who's ever facilitating this. They don't use your name and um, you won't feel silly. So without customers, we all know you're not gonna have business. So how do you get your business? Your colleagues, friends, social media, and it used to be cold calling, but not anymore. I, I don't know about you, but as far as LinkedIn, I can't even tell you how many people have reached out to me through LinkedIn. I probably have received more LinkedIn invites and also connection to connect than I have in probably the last three or four years. Let's talk about why we network. Well, we network for business developing. We need to get business, so an easy way is to network with other people. Get your name out there. Um, as we know, when you open up your business, you're not just going to say, okay, here I am. You need to work at it, and that's another reason why it's a good reason to network in many different ways. I know that our office is in Highwood, and now we are also in Chicago because I was able to uh, join some associations and now people know us also in Chicago. Lasting relationships. Um, as I have been in networking groups as far as you have also, maybe meeting people at the Polsky Center, I'm sure you've had a lot of lasting rela relationships and those people can be turned into strategic partners. My strategic partners are attorneys, accountants, Anybody that talks, that speaks to businesses, usually in the very beginning or who is a trusted advisor, those are how I get my uh, businesses, or excuse me, my new business. Resource for others. I'm not just talking about insurance. I love to help people with resources. So for instance, I hear one of my clients or people I'm talking to, oh, I don't like my accountant. I don't like my um, attorney. Well, I do have a resource list that I will share with you and I like to send that out to people. And then last but not least, helping someone. I feel that that is kind of showing everybody how you are when you're helping someone. And don't you wanna do business with someone that is very kind and likes to help other people and not just trying to get business all the time or being a taker? We're gonna start our exercise right now. So if you could get out something to write with, uh, paper, um, like I said, notes in your computer or notes in your phone. What I'm going to do is discuss um, these three columns. So if you wanna make either columns or three boxes, um, and then what I'm going to do is describe what needs to go into those or what should go into those. And then I will give you a couple minutes to um, fill those in. So you can be thinking about it as we go on. So the, fir the first, I mean, excuse me, the three are the innermost, the second's gonna be medium, and then the last is gonna be labeled outermost. So let's talk about innermost. Those to me are going to be, and you're gonna list people. Think of your clients. Uh, that you have a very good relationship with. Hopefully you have a really good relationship with all your clients, but who do you really have good relationships with? Think of mentors, people that have helped you along the way or still helping you. Strategic partners, people who are very connected. Um, because again, people that we know uh, really well, it's great to have people that are very connected because they might be able to help you get business or do other things so you, know, you can get more business. How about if you had to select a board of directors or advisory team? Who are your trusted or who would be your trusted advisors? And then think about this, deep ties with people like including your attorney and accountant. You know, there are people that really trust you and know you very well. And so those are the people that you wanna think about to put in this first column when we do the exercise. The next thing is medium. These are people that are on your acquaintance level. Um, contacts that you have maybe met in some way. 
um, acquaintances. How about prospects? Those people really don't know you very well. Um, people that you've met briefly in the past. Um, maybe people that you might have been introduced to but really didn't follow up. How about the associations you belong to? Um, and you don't, didn't really take the time to speak to those people, but you do kind of know them and you've seen them. How about people that you went to school with a long time ago? They could probably help you in some way. And then I do this kind of thing. I look back in my emails, my sent and deleted, and I look back um, weeks, months, and sometimes years and see who I haven't reached out to in a long time. And then last, the outermost. This is someone who you really don't have a relationship with at all. I mean, zero. People that you want to get to know. How about those business cards that are laying around that you never did anything with? You must have collected them for some reason. And then how about LinkedIn connections that you never reached out to? I know that when LinkedIn first started, I just accepted anybody. And now what I have done is I've gone back to my LinkedIn connections and have had time and start and reached out to people. Facebook connections. And then people that you say hello to, that you have no idea who they are, what their name is. It's a good time if you're in the grocery store and see them. Those people should maybe be on your list. And of course, they're not going to have a name. So you might say, hey, the woman with the red hat that I see. So those are the three um, categories. So now for the next three minutes, if you want to write down in these uh, three categories, try to figure out three or four names. And um, if you want, you can start right now. And hopefully after this, you will continue. There really is no right or wrong answer. Ultimas palabras. May I give you another minute? Okay, you can probably hopefully continue this. Okay, now you have your list. Now what, now what? Um, I'm gonna go over some ideas for the three categories, but a couple things I want you to think about is, think about little things you can start doing every day to strengthen or reignite or warm up relationships. You know, how about, reaching out to people and saying, 
hey, I'm thinking about you. There really is no right or wrong way to build a close network. Um, and then think of when you send out the communications, what would you be happy to receive? So let's start off with the um, inner idea, innermost ideas. One of the things that I've been doing is I've been emailing and in the subject, I've written in there, checking in with, checking in. And I've just asked people, how is your family? How are you? Hopefully you're staying healthy. How are you dealing with the pandemic and your business? Now remember, these are people that you know really well. Does anybody ever write a written paper note? You know, we kind of talked about strengthening your brand or helping you strengthen your brand because you're not really seeing anybody anymore. How about uh, maybe finding a news article that they were in or maybe even um, some type of award they might have, um, you know, just won or won in the past. Anybody start a newsletter or have one? That'd be a great thing to send to that person. Wish someone a happy birthday on Facebook. Um, I'll tell you, on LinkedIn, I don't know how many people update their recommendations or do you have any recommendations, but the best way to get recommendations on LinkedIn is offer to write one for that person and tell them a date that you're going to do it and then ask them if they would write you a recommendation. Now remember, these are people that you know. Maybe send somebody a text to say hello. Um, an article that you that they might be interested in. How about your brochure? Um, we've started spotlighting our clients on our website. So every month we um, ask a, another client. But a thing that we did that we should have done in the beginning is we gave them a short um, one sheet showing them what we're looking for. Because a lot of people were saying no and we couldn't understand why. And then we kind of switched it up and showed them what we were asking for. And now we get a lot of people saying, sure, I'll do that. One thing that someone did the other day was they sent me a book in the mail with a really nice note. And then a couple other things, we do a lot of hospitality. So I've been trying to go to some of my clients, say hello and try to send some money in their shop. Okay, now just remember, do not feel bad if you haven't reached out to these people in a while, because remember, everybody is busy and everybody is dealing with the pandemic in a different way. But I'm sure that they will be happy and you want to be, you know, that you've reached out and you want to be top of mind. You're not asking them for business. And that's what's so hard about these times is asking people for business. Think of them as a client. How do you keep your clients? And one thing I would do is try to reach out monthly or quarterly, because remember, these are your strongest relationships. Let's go to the medium. What I would start doing is, is these are people, like I said, that you don't have you know, that good of a relationship with or strong. So I would probably look on their LinkedIn and research them more. And if you're not connected with them, I would reach out and connect with them. And you might want to talk about an article that they might be interested in after you've looked at their LinkedIn. You can email the uh, checking in. I've done that before. And again, ask them how their family is. Have they, again, saw them in the news? And then what I would do is I would set up a phone call or a virtual coffee. Let them know you want to learn more about their business. I know a lot of people struggle with asking people that they don't really know, and what am I going to say? And we're gonna go over that also later. Maybe send them a newsletter after you meet them because you wanna always get permission. One of the goals that you want is you want these people in your medium uh, bucket to be in your innermost. So again, you're going to have to, um, you know, touch base with them a little bit more than you will with the innermost. And then last, the outermost. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, what I would do is check on their LinkedIn and ask any of your contacts if they know that person that you want to reach out to and can they introduce you. 
Look and see what their interest is or what do you have in common with these people? Because you want to think about why you're or how you're going to reach out to them. Have they written an article? Maybe reference that when you're reaching out. Maybe look at their Instagram or their Facebook if they're on that. And see, again, if anybody has a close uh, relationship with them on Instagram or Facebook. If not, try to connect yourself or like, you know, learn. This is the thing. When you are going to be reaching out to these people, they might not just be someone that you are wanting to get business or try to get their business, but they might be a good strategic partner. They might be able to teach you more about your business. Is there anyone that is starting up or want to start up and may want to reach out to someone that is really doing a great job, they'll want to teach you about your business, trust me. If someone reached out to me, I would be more than happy to help them. And also, they might be a good resource for your existing clients. A rule of thumb, though, is do not refer anyone without knowing more about them and what they are all about, okay? So hopefully that has helped you. Hopefully that is not going to be, or this exercise is not something that you're just going to put on the shelf. Hopefully you will continue this. Um, what I'm going to talk about now is types of networking. What can you do other than just this? How about presentations, speakers, panels? I'm sure a lot of you have things that people want to know about. Do you have a specialty? Um, it really doesn't only have to be about your business. You want people to know what you are all about. Um, I had somebody, a startup of mine, they did something, um, it was a weekly or even it was a monthly um, presentation and they did the do's and don'ts of what to do and what not to do or what to watch out for when they started up with their startup. They didn't want people to make the same mistakes. And then what they did is they had an expert um, and they introduced an expert and they talked, you know, discussed what their expert is. So for instance, I'm in insurance. I was one of their speakers and I talked to them about what they need to look out for for startups. Another thing is virtual coffee invitations. I would Try to get as many as you can. And just remember, the more people you reach out to, the more people are going to know you and hopefully think about you when they are talking to other people. Another is social media and internet. Um, LinkedIn is a great way. Um, like I said, I don't know if you have updated your, hopefully your, your pictures, you have recommendations that are updated. I know some of mine are old. And you've updated what you are doing nowadays. Um, again, like I told you about the website, maybe have a spotlight, spotlight people. How about creating your own virtual event? What we did in May um, is we figured out every Thursday in May from four to five, we had a presentation about different insurance coverages. But what we had to do is we had to figure, we did that in February and April and started sending it out to our clients and other people that were on our um, networking list, which I will also show you that. So that's another thing. And you don't even have to do four, you can just do one. How about a newsletter, blog, or publication? Start small. You know, some of these tasks are daunting, trust me. But a newsletter, one thing can be on it. And as everybody says, and I'm sure you feel the same way, who wants to read, you know, two and three pages? And also publications, you might want to reach out to the publications that you um, have a subscription to. I mean, all these places are looking for content. And then networking groups in person and virtual. I'm sure most of you, like I said, are hopefully in a networking group. It's a lot easier now because we don't have to travel far. Um, and then also, I don't know about in-person, um, that might be a while. But again, these are some of the types of networking and you probably have other suggestions of how you network also. Where to find networking opportunities? Look in your area. 
Um, again, there are a lot of small business development centers. There's a Polsky Center. And a lot of those, you know, have different um, workshops. And also there are some that you might even want to find out who the members are and start reaching out to them. Alumni groups. Have you ever looked in maybe your college? I know that LinkedIn and there are Facebook groups that have alumni groups. Maybe look into that. Non-for-profits. People ask me, what do you mean networking? Well, first of all, every, you've got a common you've got a common thread. You care about the charity in some way. So either get on the board of directors or I would get on a committee because then you're gonna see those people all the time and they're gonna see what type of person you are. Chambers, every town has one. And now most of these chambers are not charging. They have workshops um, and also again, who are the members? Try to connect with them. Memberships and organizations. Again, the Polsky Center. Um, different uh, events, like I'm sure like a health club. Um, I don't know if many of you are going, but I'm sure that you had developed relationships with people there. Are, do you have children? How about the school? Maybe become involved with that. And then place of worship. Um, I like to just throw that in because again, you know, if you're continually going or starting to go again, those people have something in common with you also. So I'm going to talk about what to think when networking. How do you want to be perceived? Well, first of all, appearance. As you know, it's much easier because everybody just usually sees the neck up. So it's easy to brush your hair and, you know, look presentable. So that's one thing. Another thing is your virtual background. It is very, very easy to have a virtual background. As you can see, I've got my company name and there are other things. I mean, some people like colorful backgrounds. How do you want people to think about you or remember you? Seek out virtual meeting participants. So for instance, for this one, this is on Zoom. You can see people and you can reach out privately to people. Um, maybe just reach out to somebody randomly on this um, presentation and say, hey, do you want to go for coffee? And then again, I'm going to be talking about what you can talk about when you do ask them. Your signature. I will let you know that there are a lot of people that I see that have signatures with just their name. If you are one of them, I would seriously try to put your company name. If you don't have a company yet, put your phone number. And also, how about a picture? I don't know about you, but there are so many people that I come in contact with that when I see the signature and they have a photo, it gives me a sigh of relief because I can see them. Now, yes, I know you can go onto LinkedIn and check them out, but a lot of people don't have their pictures on LinkedIn, so. And then always send handwritten thank you notes. Think about the last time you received a handwritten thank you note. And it doesn't have to be for business. It can be something that somebody did nice for you, you know, something that they did for you that you really appreciated. And again, this is another way that you want people to remember you. Okay, virtual coffees and phone calls. When you are going to reach out to different people, like I said, people that you might not know um, in the medium, or like I said, um, in the outermost, how about um, some of these questions? How's your family? Are they staying healthy? Tell me about your business. I will let you know that if you ask this question, I will tell you that someone can talk about 15, 20 minutes about their business. This is a loaded question. So don't feel bad about, oh my gosh, what am I going to ask? How's the pandemic affected your business? You know, maybe they can give you some advice on what they've done. And the last is, how can I help you? 
when someone asks, how can I help you, you feel good. And this is what you want also people to feel good when they talk to you. And this is not just how can I help you as far as business. I've had people ask me for car mechanics, um, for where did you get your glasses? Um, I'd like to go and maybe go to that place. So make sure, like I said, that you say, you know, you use this because again, this can also start up a long conversation. Um, hopefully that is going to lower your um, shyness or being anxious when you do ask people for virtual coffees. I don't know if there are people on the call that are in college still, but this can go for you also. You can just turn it around a little bit. Let's talk about live networking events. Hopefully we are going to get into the groove of live networking events. Now I will tell you that I know a lot of people get nervous. They like to go with a friend and then they usually probably stand in the corner and talk to people, do you know their friend? But these are some suggestions. Introduce yourself. I like to find the person that's by themselves that are not talking to anybody. Think about how you're gonna make them feel when you come up and ask them, you know, what is your name? What's your business? How, do you, how did you hear about this workshop or this event that we're at? Again, these are questions that you are not gonna sometimes be able to get away from people because they're talking so much. As you know, a lot of people like to talk about themselves. And the last question, how can I help you? And just one suggestion, if someone takes over the conversation for a, you know, a long time and you're not able to go on and meet other people, I would ask them, listen, can I take your card and we'll maybe take this, uh, maybe we'll do a virtual coffee or we can do a phone call and then you go on to the next person. I know I've been in that situation many times. Okay, I told you about my spreadsheet. Um, I have a lot of uh, events that I do and presentations, and I'm even sometimes on panels. And when you're asked to be on a panel, they're gonna wanna know, do you have a networking list? And I will let you know also, for anybody that is just starting off or that is in college, I wish somebody told me about this. Because anybody you meet, I would start a spreadsheet. Now, I've, as you can see, I have um, put the name, the company, and where I have met them, and also the year. Their email address, their phone number. I mean, you can make up your spreadsheet anywhere, you know, any way you want, but this is what I do. And I have hundreds of people on it. And it has really helped me, again, with trying to find people, if I'm trying to help people, or even, again, I use this list to start reaching out to people again during this pandemic. The next is my resource list. These are people that I really know and trust. And so for instance, an accountant, I didn't put anybody's names down just for privacy reasons, but what I do is I um, like to, I have all of these different um, categories and then underneath each one of them is going to be the person's name, their company name, their website, email address, and maybe one line of what they do. Okay, and as you can see, I've got a lot. You can start off with three or four, but this is what I do when I send out to my prospects and to my uh, renewal because these people also are my strategic partners. They give me um, connections, so I want to try to do the same for them. Okay. And then I am almost done. I want to let you know how networking has helped me during the years. It's given wider visibility to not only myself, but to my company. It has helped me grow my business tremendously. And it's, it's, it's let me help and refer others. And it has given me confidence. Um, I could never have done a presentation like this, I'd say 10 or 15 years ago. 
So hopefully you have enjoyed this. I just want to leave you with one thought. Just remember, people do not remember what you actually say or write, but how you make them feel. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Thank you, Anna. That was great. Um, we do have a question on the chat. Um, sure. So one of our guests asked um, to define a chamber. I don't know if this was part of your presentation. Okay. So if you can define that. Okay, a chamber of commerce. That is an association that is in every town, village, or city. And what they do is their memberships are business owners. And the chamber's job is to help promote their business in any way they can. So again, that's another way to look for people, you know, business owners that you want to maybe connect with. Great question. Thank you. Uh, I see that Lauren, is that how I pronounce your name? You raised your hand. Would you like to ask a question? Okay. Um, I'm good at meeting people, but shy about asking my contacts to become clients, even well-known ones. Any tips on the best way to ask? You know, that's the thing. You don't really want to ask until you really know them. And I will tell you that a lot of people, when they get to know you, they will want to give you business. And that's why I say, try to figure out how you can make people, you know, feel good. What can you do for them? What can you send to them? Also, make sure they know what you do. <laughs> so I will tell you a lot of people that I do help, they do not know what I do. But now what I'm trying to do is reaching out to them and kind of letting them know what is hard for my business and what has been, you know, hurting my business. And then we get on the conversation of that. I think that a lot of people on this call would agree with me. Asking for business is, um, I don't really you know, feel comfortable doing that. But again, hopefully you do get a conversation with say, hey, if I can ever help you, please let me know. Hopefully that helped them. Great. Great. Um, next question, how do we approach new people to get connected on LinkedIn? Well, what I do is um, I try to find people that they are connected with. So if you aren't connected with them on LinkedIn, you might want to ask other people that you're connected with. And if not, I would try to reach out and like I was saying, maybe look more into their um, what they do or what they are, um, you know, what they like to do and maybe reach out and say, hey, love to connect. I, I see that you are a great bicycle rider. Love to hear more about it. Remember, people love to talk about themselves. Um, so I think this is a follow-up question. How does one add value to these connections? Well, how you add value is what I would do is, okay, for instance, I have been um, helping people finding grants. I've been helping people try to find loans. Um, I've been trying to help when PPP was around. I would be sending um, some of my, um, you know, my contacts information about that. How can you help that person? That is something nowadays, I'll say the last four months, is something that you can do. Because I will tell you that people will be very, um, you know, they will be very happy and excited that you did that for them. So hopefully that helped. And I will let you know also, if you ever wanna reach out to me, please reach out to me. There's my information. I'd be more than happy to help you figure it out. Thank you. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. You can also use the chat function and I can also read the questions out loud. We have a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, hi, Anna. This is Rizwan. Hi. Oh. I, just a follow-up question on uh, you know my my question about uh, reaching out to new people on LinkedIn. Yeah, I I you know I kind of get what you were trying to say. Uh, in, you know, try to understand you know what they do. Probably learn more about that and then maybe reach out there. So, but in terms of a professional connection, for example, if I want to reach out someone from my industry, but totally new, whom I don't have another connection with, or probably, uh, what is the best way? I'm like, it feels it feels very hard to understand the pulse of the other person there, and uh, you know, I think you understand what I mean. Like, uh, so just reading that. Uh, reading about them may not help, right? So I don't know if I'm clear about my question. Yeah. So you want to know you're looking for somebody in your industry. Yes. You want to industry. connect with them. Yeah. Well, I would tell them that you would like to, you, this is a thing. A lot of people don't accept or don't accept coffees or phone calls because they do not want you to sell them something. So what you might want to say is, can I get some tips? Are you a startup? Are you starting up in that industry? Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I have an idea of a startup, but I, at this point of time, I just want to grow my professional network. So I am a uh, booth exec MBA student. So uh, I'm just trying to build my professional network at this point. Well, that's even better because if you are trying to reach out somebody that's already experienced in something that you, yeah. you know, are interested in, let them know that because they probably would love to help you oh. for sure. You know, again, you don't, people shy away when they think, oh my gosh, this guy, this is another sales call. You know, you don't have to make these connections that I've been talking about in this presentation like a business call. You need to get to know those people more before you even think about, you know, hopefully having a conversation about business or, you know, something like that, if that makes sense. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Sure. Okay, we have another question, but it might require some specificity. So, um, can you talk about grants and how to obtain grants and where they are sourced? Um, example are these associations. Um, I think this question might require, I think that this depends on the industry. Um, so whoever asked this question, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to um, clarify or um, want to specify if you have, if you're in a specific industry in terms of grants. But I guess generally speaking, Anna, do you know where mm -hmm. this can yes. um, find grants? Yes. Um, first of all, what I will do is I found out um, a website that you can sign up for that will, um, first of all, alert you about grants. So I will send that to you. But what I would do is, I don't know if you've ever heard of Axiom. It's A-C-C-I-O-N. And I can connect you if you want to, or you just reach out to them. They will let you know the grants that are in Cook County for sure. If you are in like Lake County or DuPage County, reach out to that county and ask them if they have any grants coming up, because I will tell you that a lot of them do. You might want to call the chamber in your city or village or town and ask them about opportunities because they really should have all that information. Hopefully that helped you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? That was a really good question, by the way, too. Yes, I agree. Axion is a great partner as well, and they're a wealth of resources. Yes. You know, there's also the Women's Business Development Center, and they help men and women, and you might reach out to them and ask them. It's a non-for-profit, so any information is no charge. 
but they probably have grants also or know about grants. Um, following up on that question mm -hmm. is like, is the a SBA also a good option for grants? Yes, the SBDC for sure. The small business development centers all over, yes. They are, you know, they, the state, um, you know, gives them money. They are also a non-for-profit. So yes, they should be able to help you. There are quite a few. And if you just Google that, you will see in Chicagoland, they're everywhere. They're in suburbs, they're in the city. Good, good, um, good suggestion, good point. Chambers woman, but um, cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much. Of course. Cool, cool, cool. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Do we have any more questions? And again, please reach out to me. I would be happy to help you. Um, so someone asked with the association that was just mentioned, um, and I think you're still referring to Axiom, right? Unless you were talking about a different organization. You mean like the SBDC? Oh yeah, so um, the SBDC, and I think you also mentioned the Women Business Development Center. Yes, the WBDC, but yes. Those are all different associations. Those are in addition to Axial. And also, you might be able to get on these people's websites or their emails, and then they, you know, you'll get alerts from them also. Um, question. Sure. Okay. Um, so, is it? Is it useful to make a lot of connections on LinkedIn rather than making more meaningful connections? Uh, I mean, my question is more about, uh, is, it, is it like, you know, is it also good to have a lot of connections on your, on your network or, or is it probably only good to have people who, you know, uh, people who you think should be probably good to you? Like, I don't know if that makes sense to you. So do I the second one? Okay. It does. I'm glad you brought that up because I will tell you that I have been embarrassed a few times because when LinkedIn uh, first started, I was accepting everyone. And now people are asking me, hey, can you uh, connect me with this person? I have no idea who they are. <laughs> so... <laughs> Does it matter if, I mean, to me, anybody on LinkedIn should be someone that you know and that you could connect somebody else with. And I will tell you, um, I'm looking now at all these people that are trying to connect. Some of them are from different countries. Some of them are from different states and I have no idea who they are. So what I do is I say before I accept them, how can I help you? And then if I never hear from them again, um, then that's fine. So, okay, does that help you? Yeah, I think that's greatly helpful because I, I get this confused a lot of time. We receive a lot of requests on LinkedIn, uh, I don't know, from recruiters, from other people. From oh. and there. So don't really know if, if it's really useful to connect with them or to, you know, I think this, this answer is very helpful, Anna. Thanks for that. Great. Um, real quick question. Um, so I know that LinkedIn has the LinkedIn gold status. Do you need to, if, like, if I send you a connect to, and you send me, uh, Hey, how can I help you? Do we need to be connect? Don't we need to be connected to be able to have that conversation? You know, something I'm not sure about that. Um, no. Okay. Lauren says no. Doesn't matter. I believe you can send a message to someone on LinkedIn. They don't have to be connected. Okay. I okay. think that used to be a while ago, and I think they changed that. Thanks. Sure. But if you're not connected to um, a specific person, let's say you want to reach out to and they have a premium account, I don't know if you can message them directly. No, I, I, don't, I don't think you can message someone you're not connected to, but personally, I just found premium wasn't really worth it. I mean it's just a lot easier to just connect with the person. I mean, because you can always unconnect if for whatever reason it's, 
you know, it's it's not a good thing. But I, I personally found that premium wasn't worth the money. Got it. Got it. So have you tried connecting with someone you're, you, um, you weren't connected before, um, like sending a message to them? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, especially when you try to connect, you can add like a little memo. So right. I know it's useful to add a memo and then um, mm -hmm. uh, you say, hi, the, uh, my name is X. I wanted to reach out and connect because I seen your post on Y or whatever. Um, but then you, but then like, that there's just no connection, so it is what. Yeah, it's like. you can you can send a, a when you send a, an invite, you can put a note to it. So yeah. and then if they, you know, sometimes I've even had like you could say people that will you know respond to a message and not even connect. You know, sometimes you know, but you can send a message to somebody with an invitation, with the free account. Got it. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Um. How are, are you guys going to be sending out an email with everybody's contact information, maybe like um, like your LinkedIn's and all that stuff? So like we can set, so if anybody wants to set up a coffee, a virtual coffee, will we? Um, so I, so typically we don't do that, but we can ask if anyone does not want their information shared, um, please let me know. Um, if not, we can share. I, I think it'll be great to um, work with one another, but if people do not want their contact information to be shared, their email to be shared, let me know. Um, and I can um, make sure that you're not, your information is not shared, but I think it'll be great for um, you guys to connect. Cool. I'm just gonna put that in there. Anna, are you okay with sharing the presentation with everyone? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So I can share yeah. that with everyone. And this is also being recorded, so you'll also get a link to the recording once it's ready. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, we can wrap up. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, please check out the Polsky Center uh, for other more events and workshops. And a big thank you to Anna. Um, thank you for taking the time um, to share your experience and talk about, an, to talk about an important topic and we're adjusting to networking. So I think it's important to just um, keep that human connection going and uh, just creatively think about what type of strategies you want to utilize and what works for you. But thank you, Anna, and I hope you guys are all safe and uh, take care. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Anna.